Hi guys, welcome back to the Chirping Bird podcast. Today I've got a guest with me. The last episode I did was a solo episode and I decided that I needed a little bit of company this time around. So I've got someone from quite a few hours away to say the least. We've got Melissa all the way from England. She's joining us today to just do a little chit chat. We're going to talk about some boss babe moves, um, just working in the social media industry and how she's basically started her own social networking empire. So with that being said, I would like to welcome Melissa. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. I am so excited to be on here. Um, so I'll just start off by saying a little bit about myself. Yeah. Um, so everyone can probably hear my accent. <laughs> so um, my name is Melissa Jasmine and I am 21 years old and I am from London in England. Yeah. I always got it mixed up then. Um, and so I'll just show a little bit about my story and kind of how I am, where I am today. Um, so obviously I went to school and then when I was 16 years old, you kind of make the decision whether to go down the sixth form route, which is further education or to go to college. Um, so I always wanted to be a fashion designer. So I went down the route of going to a fashion college in London and I studied fashion design there for two years. So 16 to 18. And then when I was 18, I, um, it's kind of the age where you get pushed to go to university or college. Yeah college I think you guys call it um so I wasn't ready to go to university I was so bored of education I just wanted to like live a life a free life basically so I decided not to go to university and to kind of have a break um from education so I worked in like waitressing for a little while until I got my job in fashion in London um so I worked in my fashion job in London for six months it was very corporate world it was just very um full on let's just say um so it kind of led me to want to escape that and go traveling so i then left there after six months and worked as a waitress for six months before i went away last may so 2019 um, so I went traveling around the world on my own for about six months. It was just over um, and I came home in November of 2019 and I came home with a mindset of wanting to be a business owner because it's what I've always wanted to do. So I came home with some spare money that I'd saved and hadn't spent um, and I decided to start my own lash and brow studio which is where I'm currently at now. So I do lashes, brows, all of that. Um, I meet amazing people by doing so and it's an amazing way for me to earn money um however six weeks into me kind of qualifying and starting up my brand i um corona happened and we went into lockdown so i decided to start my um what's it called network marketing business in health and wellness company and um, so i also do that alongside my lash and brow um so that is where i'm at and my network marketing company has kind of taught me a lot about um the mindset and being a boss babe and how to basically run a business. So if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be doing well with my other business. So I am forever grateful. So yeah, that is a little bit about me. Wow, that was an awesome introduction. Uh, she texted me before we started. Yeah, I'm just gonna wing it. That literally sounded phenomenal. Like you would practice this like 15 times. I don't think I could have done an introduction as good as you. <laughs> So um, uh, props to you on that one. So I'm going to do some hot seat with you. I have been doing hot seat to everyone that I interview and like do a podcast episode with. And everyone seems to really like it. And people want like juicier and juicier hot seat questions. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm at that level yet to be like asking people all these random, uh, you know, in-depth questions. So we'll, we'll, we'll go easy on you but um so I have a few kind of like involving media and like I guess kind of the area that you're in and then I just have a few random ones so I'll do the random ones first but what is your go-to coffee order Ooh. okay so it used to be a latte but I'm trying to be healthy so it's now an Americano with half coconut milk oh you're a coconut milk girl I like that 
Um, okay, so then favorite way to reset yourself. So if you're having like a really crappy day and or week or whatever and you just need to refresh your mind. Uh, I know a lot of people do self-care days, but what's your way that you refresh yourself my go-to is meditation and um goal setting so i just sit and write my goals and read through my goals and remind myself why i'm doing what i'm doing do you use an app for your meditation yeah i actually got some app recently it's called mimi method so it's by this lady i don't think we have that here in north america i don't know she's from um uh, probably i think she's from canada she's canadian oh really Mimi Bouchard, she was on Made in Chelsea um, and we had a training from her the other day and so I downloaded her app and I'd use that. But before I had the app, I just used YouTube, just guided meditation. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. I should try that. Um, okay, so then <laughs> I have something. This is juicy. This is, this is a good one. What's the last thing you searched on your phone? Oh, do I have to have a look? Yeah, go ahead, look. Oh, this is juicy. Do you know what? I have a feeling I know what it is. Thought so. Holiday. I'm booking a holiday. <laughs> oh my gosh. Where Where do you want to go? I'm going to Cyprus, which is just I don't don't know where it is. Yeah, isn't that um like Southern Europe? Yeah, Europe. Yeah, yeah, it's Europe. So I just know it's close to me. <laughs> that sounds really fun. Um, I'll do one more like random thing something you look forward to every day when you wake up do you know what it's actually my miracle morning that i do which is so like cringe but i do my miracle Miracle morning morning. every morning and that gets me out of bed so what is that like what is a miracle morning a miracle morning so it's actually created by a guy called Hal elrod and he created the miracle morning basically it's a book you should get it it's incredible and you basically wake up you have an hour before you even start your day, of just completely setting the intention for the day. So I do like um, meditation, g- uh, gratitude, affirmation, visualization, um, read my book, and then do like a 30 minute task all within like before 8 a.m. Wow. Oh my gosh. So what time do you wake up in the morning? I wake up at like seven. Oh, okay. Not too bad. Yeah. That, that's really cool. And miracle morning. So I'll, it, can you find that on Amazon? Yeah, yeah, literally. I got it on my Kindle, but you can order it. It's a book. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I think I need some... I don't know. I have such bad habits when I wake up in the morning. I'll just sit on my phone for like, like an so hour. Bad. That is so naughty. <laughs> I know, I know you're not supposed to go on your phone for... What is it, like the first 45 minutes of your day yeah, or something? Yeah, literally. I think it's 45 minutes. And honestly, this book changes lives. Like, he says it in the beginning, and I was like... Pff. Okay, and it's changed my life, so yeah. Wow, okay, so I'm definitely trying that. Um, All right, so the last hot seat question I have for you is what's your favorite product currently? Could be like any sort of product, food product (laughs) or something. So obviously I'm biased because I have my own online marketing business. Yeah. (laughs) But um, I mean, all the products I use are the best because they're all like cruelty free and everything free. But I think... Hmm, I love a CC cream. Like, that's what I have on my skin right now because I really don't know where yeah. makeup. So for me, probably CC cream because it just makes you look flawless and you don't have to be, like, covered in makeup. Yeah, and it's so easy because you can just, like, it's one thing, you're one and done. Yeah, that's, and it's got yeah. SPF in it, so you know. And do you use the um, the CC creams from your, like, brand? Oh, okay. Um, so I have a few question well not a few few to say the least i've got like a whole page of notes that i've written down and questions to ask you (laughs) um so i think the first one is maybe i'll touch on the traveling because you were saying in your introduction how you traveled for six months right so i have you uh, first of all just list off the countries that you went to in the six months or just like maybe the maybe big like the big countries. Okay, so I th- yeah. I honestly counted. I can't remember how many it was. I counted on my way home how much place I went to. It was so many. But country wise, I started off in Thailand. Then I flew yeah. to Vietnam, and then I flew to the Philippines, and then I flew to Bali, and then I flew to Australia, and then I flew back to Thailand, and then I flew home. Wow. So I'm assuming Thailand was the. Uh number one pick do you know what actually wasn't my favorite but my boyfriend met me in thailand for the last of my trip i'd already had a ticket booked from australia to thailand to home so i was like may as well meet me in my stopover 
and then yeah. we'll do two weeks and then go home oh that's nice so yeah so um your best travel tip <laughs> I think, especially when you're in the plane for a long amount of time, um, I don't know, especially, well, I went over to Europe last summer, I went to England and um, Paris, absolutely loved it, but um, I hate sitting in planes, I am the worst person to sit beside because I'm constantly moving, I can't focus on a movie, I like, can't decide whether I'm hot or cold, hungry, not hungry, thirsty, got to go to the bathroom, I'm just all over the place and I just want to, like it, you got to be really strong to go on a lot of plane rides so I just wanted to know like what's your best tip for traveling especially in planes all the time it's so true I never really thought about it I love traveling like honestly my whole life I get so excited for the airport and traveling like I love it okay so my top tip is probably so my time on traveling I always had a notebook and I always, like, I was, that yeah. is basically how I came up with the idea of what I wanted to do when I was home. I would just write down everything, like, I needed to do, all my goals, where I want to be. That was when I actually did my goal planning, my goal setting, and, like, my visualisation was on the plane. So I think it's best to do things that you enjoy. So for me, I enjoy talking about my future and planning my future. So that's, like, what I would sit on the plane yeah. and do. Um, or download loads of podcasts, because I love a podcast. <laughs> they're like my two things yeah. that's a good that's good yeah um I that's definitely something that I didn't do when I was traveling uh, I did not bring my journal with me so I was bored out of my mind <laughs> I had a diary for the whole thing I would write like every day that's really good that's smart um okay so then the best product to bring so if you could only bring one thing obviously I mean like clothes whatever those are necessities but like the one most important thing to bring when you're traveling besides your passport? Um, hmm. I'd probably say that's a hard one, you know. There's so much. Honestly, apart from your phone as well. <laughs> um apart from your phone honestly like a journal I'm not joking like that kept me yeah. sane especially yeah. when I was solo traveling when I felt so alone at times yeah. I would just cry into my journal like I miss my family I miss my boyfriend like and it felt so good after so I honestly would say a journal did you ever think at one point that you wanted to just go back home and you didn't want to continue anymore what like one time yeah yeah, I, I, I can see how it gets lonely and you don't really know. Definitely, <laughs> you, you meet people and you make friends. And then when you're on your own, like they already have a plan. So if like, their plan doesn't meet your plan, they leave you. Then you're alone again. You have to go through the whole process of meeting people, making friends. Yeah. It's just like it can get so tiring. Um, and you know what? Traveling, I actually wrote an ebook all about it. Because um, I thought there was so kind of much to talk about. I just did it when I was in Australia. Yeah. I wrote an ebook. Um. And I kind of say in it that traveling is 100% incredible. However, there are so many negatives that people don't talk about. <laughs> and I felt yeah. so alone when I felt these negatives. And then I would speak to people like, oh, no, I feel like that. And I was like, well, why does no one ever talk about it? Because I feel I'm so alone. Yeah, everyone puts on a facade that, like, traveling is the best thing that you can possibly do. And I mean, yeah, I'm sure that's very true. But also for someone who strives off of being around people and social interaction, I could see how that's very difficult for you know, be so removed from society, you're being brought into a totally different culture and everything. So no, I definitely, I definitely see how that could be a big challenge. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. So I have some boss babe questions because you are like the queen of, I want to say marketing yourself on the internet like you just have so many connections you know you're just very well I want to say diverse with the people you surround yourself with uh how we met <laughs> so um I wanted to ask you how you balance working with a company running your own salon social media and then a social life on top of that because those can be 
you know, those take up a huge part of your life if you're only doing one of those things. So I couldn't even imagine having like all five of those different things to do and trying to to fit it from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. Yes. So I've never thought I, I just want to like know. <laughs> <laughs> so, in all honesty, I don't f- I don't feel like I work. Like I always have money in my account. I'm always like good with money. I'm like how? Because I feel like I don't even work because I hated the jobs I used to have. I thought that was work. I thought you had to hate what you do to earn money. Yeah. And that's just not the case. Um. So. Do you know how I juggle it? Number one, I use Google Calendar and I learned this off a podcast. Um, this guy I listened to in network marketing, he said about it and I was like, oh, oh it's life. It's literally my life. Google Calendar. And for me, um, my network marketing business, all my best friends have made, I've made through that. We all have our businesses together. So our social events and kind of my work with that I'm always with them anyway. So when I work, I'm with my best friends. So that kind of helps. Um, lashes and brows, I always see people, I meet my best friends through doing lashes and brows, <laughs> so I feel like my whole life is just revolved around, like, meeting people. Um, yeah. but yeah, I think juggling, I think you just have to, like, take life with a pinch of salt and just love what you do, like, that's the main, yeah. the most important thing, because I had, went through when I was in my 9 to 5 in fashion, I just hated life, like, literally hated it I yeah so I've been there and I know how difficult it is and you just want every day to be but like be done with but I get so upset when it's like halfway through the day I'm ready I'm like I'm not ready for like the evening I want it to be like longer so I think the main like bit of advice is just I don't know like just love what you do and it won't be work basically and you're juggling no I've definitely found that I think you know I went from high school right into college absolutely hated it um and then you know, had a nine to five job, well, was working a bunch of different jobs to try and pay bills and stuff, and then ended up moving home. And honestly, I think moving home was probably the best decision I could ever have because I started my YouTube channel, I started my podcast, I started my blog, I started all of these different things. And it's like, I'm not even working because those things are hobbies and they were hobbies before I even started doing them but now that I'm like trying to take it more seriously and um, you know really create a career off of it it just doesn't feel like work at all and you're kind of like I don't really need to have a social life because my social life is like talking with other people I'm working with or um, you know like doing any sort of editing people you know obviously someone would think sitting down to a computer for 40 plus hours to edit a video you're like that is sounds like torture and sounds like a job to me but honestly I think because you just have a passion for it and you love it so much that there's it it doesn't even feel like a job and you could do it and I mean you get faster as you get better at it so it doesn't even take as long to be yeah yeah so I definitely found I definitely found that um okay so the best way to get yourself out of a funk and I know you had talked about doing your meditation is a good way to kind of reset yourself but I think I'm a a funk I'm thinking more of especially after a really heavy week for me I'll go through a few days of burnout where I can't do anything I can't produce any videos can't do any podcast like I can't do anything because I'm just so burnt out and then after those few days I'm so stuck in that loop of wake up have breakfast watch YouTube videos you know go for a walk go like have dinner and then go to sleep and I just get into that mindset of that's okay like I don't need to make videos I don't need to create any sort of content but obviously I need to get out of that funk so I think I mean for me personally I think it's just a matter of writing it down in my journal and then I see it in words and I'm like okay I'm doing that because it's in words so I can't really not do it so I actually spoke about this to my best friend earlier at the gym so we were saying how 99% of people live in the state of lack so you live in the state of I don't have enough money I don't like my job my body isn't how I want it to be you never focus on the positive so for me the way I get out of being in a funk is being like okay this is like I'm I've worked so hard and I feel like this rubbish or whatever 
but what have I gained positive from this or what is positive in my life? And like, that is what I use to turn me out the funk, if that makes sense. So you, I'll be like, okay, so I've done this. I'll write down everything I've done that week. Be like, oh my gosh, I've done that. That's amazing. Okay, now what can I do to make it even more better? Like how, do you know what I mean? Like that's what I do is I flip it around into a positive and a gratitude thing rather than a state of lack. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I think definitely for me, my weakness is, you know, I'll sit down and I'll watch like YouTube for four hours and I look at the clock and I'm like, oh, wow. okay, so it's time to go to sleep now. But I guess in a way you can flip it and you can say, you know, I just spent four hours of watching other ideas and maybe I can implement those into my video creation and stuff so I really like that one that's a good 100%. Um, and also can I just say you know what I learned the other day this guy is very it's in network marketing but it applies to life he basically said every morning wake up and decide what you're doing that day decide to have a day off decide to have three hours of chilling like decide it and do it but don't um, give up on what you want to do that day and just give in to not doing anything but decide to do it and I think he said that makes you feel so much better and like you've accomplished something because you decided to chill <laughs> yeah so okay do you think that it would be worthwhile to make that decision in the morning or the night before because I think for me personally if I make that plan the night before I'm like okay you know what this is what I'm doing from the second I wake up whereas you know especially when I was going through it in the um spring this year I would wake up and I would say I'm going back to bed not do anything with my day and that's how, how I was deciding my day was going to go but I think if I decided the night before I'm going to get up I'm going to you know at least get dressed go downstairs like do something with myself I think I would do it but I don't think I've ever thought about like planning it just in the morning no I think I think the morning I feel like I feel like no matter what, you should always have an hour of productivity in your day, no matter what. Like, say if you want a chill day, I let myself have days off, but I do my hour of work or I do my hour of planning my socials for the week or I do an hour of something and then I let myself chill. Because you know when you feel yourself getting into chill mode, you're like, oh no, I've watched one YouTube, going into another, going into another. And then you're like, oh my God, like I'm five hours in. That for me, I get so on, I get so angry at myself for letting myself get into that pit. Whereas if you oh, have to do like an hour of work and then you you decide in the morning, okay, I'm going to an hour work, have a coffee, have lunch, then I'll have a few hours of chill. It's so much better. Yeah. Well, and I think that um, kind of plays into your Enneagram type because I got Melissa to do the Enneagram test. Uh, well, I think she did it yesterday. So it's probably fresh in her mind, but she is a type three, which is an achiever. So that fits in very well with um, what you're saying there. You want to have an hour of productivity every single day. And um, yeah, probably, probably because that's your... <laughs> personality that makes so much type. sense yeah it's so funny because I, I was talking to my best friend about it yesterday and you know we were going over the all the Enneagram types and like explaining things to her and I was saying you know for she's single so I'm like you got to get a boyfriend that's a type five and she's like I don't agree with you and I start reading out like all the things that a type five has and she's like okay yeah actually you're right this is so so true so I think that reflects like your your test results I mean I'm really biased towards the whole, whole test because I think that like it's the best thing ever created I mean for someone who doesn't think that then obviously they're gonna be like well this is all garbage and it none of it is actually like, I'm gonna sense. do one of my boyfriend now you have to like it's so I don't know it's just like you uncover all of these things about yourself but I think yeah definitely because you're it, it I'm looking at the overview right now but it says achiever and um you know they're always stars of human nature <laughs> successful businesswoman they were just giving examples <laughs> of what uh type threes are and uh yeah that was the the first one that popped up so no I definitely think that that a lot of your <sighs> decisions you make in a day really reflect on on your personality type because I know for me I'm like I hour of productivity a day 
Mm. Do you know what else I learned? Do you know what? That's come from my network marketing business because for, really? it's a daily consistent thing. Like you can't just do an hour every week. Like yeah. it needs to be an everyday thing, but a little bit every day. So that's where I've got that from. But I actually learned that, um, you, well, I didn't learn this, it's common sense, but I've never thought about it, where your micro choices of every single little thing you do in your day equal your big goal, like your big life, like your big vision. Yes. So they say it's like your, um, say you want this amazing bikini body and you reach in the fridge, if you choose the pizza over the salad, that is, you think in your head, oh, it's not a big deal, it's one pizza. You think that every day is gonna add up to like 50 pizzas. Whereas if you had the salad every day, think about how different your body would be. So it's the little micro choices that I've really, I really manage. Like, so if I feel sluggish, I'm like, oh, I don't wanna wake up for 7 a.m. I'm like, well, if you don't, and then you feel this again tomorrow, you don't do it again tomorrow, and then you don't do it the next day, you do it like that. It's a micro choice yeah. every day. And then it turns into a funk. <laughs> 100%, we've all been there, but it's about yeah. like, noticing what you're doing wrong and changing oh, it. Oh, I really like that. Okay. Um, well, maybe I should start watching all my micro choices. So Honestly, then, um... it, changes, it, changes your, it changes your life, I suppose, because the little things you do every day, the little habits, if you change them, obviously your life's going to change. Um, well, I think I have one more question about like being a, mm, I think, boss babe thing and then I've got a few other questions that are not really <laughs> a part of that but what does a productive day look like to you um so I'd probably say I wake up at like seven do my miracle morning at eight and then I go to the gym for nine I usually do like an hour session and then um get ready for the day I'll do like some lashes or brows in my salon um, and then I'll do, I always do two hours of my network marketing business a day. Um, I always meet up with people when I create like new relationships and stuff. Um, so going for lunches or coffee dates, it's a hard life, honestly. Um, and then, yeah, that's like, as, like, that's as busy as it gets for me. Like, but honestly, my days just go. I fill them with so much stuff, but all like plan my social media, post on social media, or now I'm gonna have to stop planning YouTube, so I just started a YouTube. So it's just stuff like that, really. But I definitely jam pack my days. But yeah, it's just like lashes or my network marketing business, basically. Oh, that's interesting. That's good. I'm, uh, that's something I need to <laughs> look up to keep my day busy, st uh, chock full with all different things. Because I think it gives you less time to get sidetracked and procrastinate in doing things. Because if you always have something going on, then it's kind of like um, you get don't have time done. to do anything. You literally else. get more done. So my dad always says to me, ever since I was young, he always says, and it's so true, um, if you ever have to ask someone to do a favour for you, always ask a busy person, never ask someone who's got nothing on. A busy person will fit it into their schedule to get it in. A person who's got nothing in their schedule will just fit, eh. I'll do it like another day. And how true yeah. is that? That is so true. I honestly, I think anyone, you know, I even I can see it in friends. It's like you ask one friend who's really busy, works all day long, has like all these extracurricular events and like things going on in their life. And you say, oh, did you want to like grab coffee sometime this week? They'll be like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let's fit it in. And then you ask someone who's, you know, like not really working, just kind of chilling at home and like class sometime. And then it always ends up being like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, let's do it this week. And then yeah. Comes and they're like, yeah, next week, this next week, week next, me, next week. month, next year. Yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> and then like three years later, it's like, Remember that coffee? Okay. Should we go now? <laughs> yeah, it's so true. It is so true. Wow, I really, I, I like that one. I think I'm going to have to uh, use that with... Uh, and you probably saw my Instagram a lot. I jam-pack my day full of, like, personal development too. So, like, this morning I had an hour free, like, before I went to the gym because I went a bit later. I was like, oh, I found myself scrolling on Instagram. I literally was, like, threw my phone on the bed. I was like, what can I do? So I put, like, TED Talks on my um, laptop and I just write notes. So this guy was just talking about leadership and becoming a leader. And I learned so much from this 30-minute TED Talks on YouTube but I would have just sat there on my phone scrolling if I hadn't have thought about it. 
Yeah, no, that's honestly, that's really good self-control, though, because I feel like a lot of people wouldn't be able to pull themselves away from their phone. It's almost like you get sucked into this black hole and you can just sit there for hours and you can't pull yourself away from it. So, I mean, kudos to you for being able to, you know, tell yourself, yeah, this is not how I want my morning to be spent. Give time. Give time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, literally. But give yourself time to get there. I haven't got like this overnight. I've been doing like, since April, I've done this change in my life. So it's taken months. Well, it's just all determination and um, like routine and stuff. So. Mindly. Yeah. Okay. So what is the best advice you can give to someone who wants to start working on their own, whether it's, you know, a lash in brow studio out of their house, or if it's, you know, creating their own YouTube channel or, you know, whatever it is, just being their own boss, not having to reply or respond to anyone higher up than themselves. So I would just say, I have always wanted to be a business owner, like my parents both are, my grandparents were, like it's just always been a thing for me. So for me, it's never, it's always been what I'm going to do, but I know for most people, it's not really that way. So my bit of advice, honestly, it sounds so simple, would just be just to go for it. I think save enough money so you have enough as backup. Like I've had enough to let even, so I think save enough money so even if it doesn't work for the first few months, you have backup. It's not stress, like you have enough money to cover bills. Um, and I would say just go yeah. for it. I think put your all into it. But mainly I would say really get into your mindset and training your mind on how to become who you need to be to get to where you want to be. And it is that simple because I learned this recently. It's like you, the old me could never have got to where I am in my life because I didn't have the right mindset. I had to reprogram my beliefs and my self-belief to get to where I am. So it'd just be like, go for it, have enough money to back yourself up and to completely just fill your brain with knowledge and pa like knowledge is power at the end of the day. So fill your brain with knowledge and your mindset will completely change and that will help you so much. Yeah. And I think that also, I mean, for a lot of people, I do know, you know, creating your own, I guess, empire, like your being your own boss, it can be be really strainful on your bank account especially and I've noticed that over the past <laughs> couple months um, but I think that I guess you have to lose a little to gain a little so even if that means you know you're going to be living with you know not being able to go get Starbucks every day and not being able to go out for dinner with your friends once a week. I think those little sacrifices uh, really, you know, help you in the long run because then, you know, you do have enough no enough money to pay for your bills um, while you're not making anything because, I mean, at least for me right now, I'm not monetized on YouTube and this is where my podcast goes anyway. So that's kind of my YouTube videos and my podcast don't have any sort of income. So the only thing that I'm really getting would be brand, um, like collaborations with brands and stuff on Instagram and um, that type of stuff. So I think that you really get into the mindset. You're like, oh my gosh, like I should be doing another part-time job. So I'm able to afford this lifestyle that I want to have which is great because you're like manifesting all the things that you want to have in the future but I think that you're not really sacrificing in that sense because you're not you're just giving into everything that you want right away and you're doing you're living the exact same lifestyle as you're going to be living in two years from now and you don't have to, well, you obviously are working to get there, but you don't have to struggle to get there. I mean, you may have to struggle with time management. I think honestly, it's just saying to everyone around you, your loved ones, people who mean the most to you, saying, guys, look, like I'm, I'm committing to my goals for the next, I don't know, two years. Let me just put my head down and work. Like, let me get on with it. And then after that, I'll be so time free and financially free that it won't, oh, you can see me whenever, like it won't matter, but let me just put my time into this. Because I think a lot of the time, it's kind of family and friends that stop you from doing things without them meaning to, they think they're being nice. But I think you just have to go for your goals and just literally sit them all down and be like, I'm going for my goals, I'm going like, 
fast I'm gonna get there like I always say to my baby sister she's six and I say by the time you're 10 like I will be able to take you to anywhere in the world you want to go like I'll have this incredible house we'll have your own room and she's like okay so she called my room I'm doing work she goes sorry you're doing work I'll leave you I want that house okay and then she like runs out so like they know the deal my family so I think it is yeah. just about like really I don't know really putting your mind to it and just going for it because all it is is commitment that you need commitment and drive yeah. And has your family accepted, you know, what you want to do, like working the non-traditional route, you know, the not the nine to five? Yeah, so, um, yeah, my my mum and dad, they've always been quite chill. My mum, 100%, like, she supports me and she loves it. Um, And, yeah, my dad, same. I mean, my family are very much, they kind of go to uni, get a profession and do a nine to five their whole lives. That's what they do. My, me, my brother and sister, we're all very different. We all have our own businesses. We're like, my brother's 18, I'm 21, my sister's 23. And we all have our own businesses. So we're surrounded by each other. So I don't know if my uh, my family accept it as such. Like my, um, I don't know, my immediate family do. And that's all I care about and my boyfriend. So yeah, it's not traditional. But I think as long as you're happy, like they saw how unhappy I was in a traditional nine to five. Um, they yeah. saw I had to run away across the world to get like out of that pit um so I think they know I just need to do what makes me happy basically and that is what I'm doing now no that's good that you have that support system and I think that probably really helps with your uh, you know progression in what you're doing because if you don't have that support system then you're kind of you know I mean you're not technically on your own because you have everyone who you're working with But I mean, in the sense of immediate family and like having that support system outside of work, I think that probably really is, um, well, impacts you on the... like because in my my network marketing company it's 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 very like people are very against it like because people have beliefs about it and I think and there's a lot of people that come in and have to quit because their parents don't agree their boyfriend doesn't agree like it 100% affects your life and what people around you think so I think you have to make people know that you're taking it seriously and no matter what you're doing if you're going to be an accountant or if you're going to be I don't know a lawyer or even if it's a lash brow studio like it doesn't matter what you're doing. I think you need to make sure people know you're serious about what you're doing. And I think that's the main thing. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, especially trying to get my family on board with it. I'm still working on it. But <laughs> um, I think if you don't have the results, it's hard to prove 100%. to people that you're serious about it. Because how can you be serious about something if you don't have any results? Like you're not getting paid millions of dollars from it. So I think that you know at least for me that's something that I've been trying to work on is but I think in that in that respect I think because podcasting YouTube it's all so new parents don't understand like older generation it's literally like what do you mean you can earn money from this in the internet what do you like to them it's unknown and that's scary I get it for their kid to do the unknown but at least you know what you're doing um that's the main thing really you you know what you're doing you get head screwed on Oh my gosh, this is like a whole counseling uh, meeting. I'm getting some great life advice here. Um, (laughs) (laughs) What can I say? uh, I do want to be a life coach one day. Life coach? That would be good. I do want to do it one day, you know. I think that would be a great, like, uh, you know, there's all these apps. The, uh, oh, I think it's like Calm and... um, There's another one that we use I love Calm. Coaches and like counselors through the app to FaceTime and like skype call with you or whatever i think you would do amazing with that like that should be that should be on your uh, bucket list of things to do in the next five years honestly it really is <laughs> um speaking of things like things that you want to do where do you see yourself um and i know you said you want to have a big house and like your little sister can have her own room but where do you see yourself in five years from today so that would be 2025 um where what do you think your life's gonna look like that's so funny because this morning in my visualization I did five years from now (laughs) so I literally know what I would be um so five years from now wait so I'll be what 26 yeah I'll be 26 so um I'll be in my own house and I'll have multiple successful businesses so I'm using my lash and brow studio my network marketing business as like vehicles to get me to where I want to be they're not my forever businesses well my network marketing one is but my lash and brow is kind of more of a stepping stone so I basically see myself my day-to-day life just being 
like super busy with meetings and like um I want to get into the fashion world I think that's what I kind of do and I have my own brand so like meetings lunches um like having really important like calls and um you know you have like design meetings where you pick what you want or pick fabric and like I, I see myself in this really busy Kylie Jenner style lifestyle as in the fact of how her like life is as in meetings and all this stuff that is how I see my life being and also being on like podcasts like how I'm now my first one um YouTubes and like being big in that aspect as well and I also want to go on to become like a a public speaker and like at events and stuff to do network marketing and just like the law of attraction in general so that's kind of where I see myself being but I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm 25. Wow good goal Uh, I hope that you become a millionaire that would be amazing. Also Forbes Um, 30 under 30 I'll be honest. Yes not big goals um, or anything. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go for it, honestly. Life's only short. You only have one life. That's so true. And, you know, like, I'm I'm sure you can do it. Like, there's nothing stopping you. There's nothing in the way of you being able to achieve that goal. No, right? Like, only your mindset. Only thing in the way. Um, so you said you wanted to go back into the, the fashion industry. Did you want to do, you know, like, creating a line of clothing or... I've always wanted right. to. However, I feel like... I actually am not even sure if it will be a fashion brand. I just know I'll have a brand. I don't know what it'll be in. I can't ex- put my finger on it. But I see this vision of a brand. But for me, fashion's been a big thing I've wanted to do. However, big brands and fast fashion brands, it's hard to keep up with them at the prices yeah. they are. And the fr- next day delivery and all of that, it's hard to keep up with. So I don't know if it'll be fashion, but I know it'll be some kind of brand or pro- new product I bring out or something along those lines, I think. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, like having your very own product line, basically, that, yeah, and actually, that actually really goes into something that I wanted to ask you, but finding your niche, finding, you know, something that's different from everyone else, you know, what you're really good at, um, I think for a lot of people, it's really hard to find their niche in career-wise, right? And it takes, here in Canada, you have to go to university or college for four years. And basically in those four years, you have, you know, enough time to try and figure out what type of job you want to have after school. So, you know, I think, especially for me, I was at, I only went to college for a year, but in that year, I'm like, I don't think I could picture myself doing anything in this because I can't, I wouldn't be able to find my niche in the music industry. And um, I know for a lot of other people, because you're forced at such such a young age to pick where you want to go to school, what you like, you know, essentially what you want to do. Um and it's just narrowing it down and it's so hard to do so I think I mean you had said that traveling kind of got you to that point but I mean like there must have been a certain situation or like a uh, an event maybe that you know got you to think oh yeah like I want to do social media and networking and all that type Uh of stuff so number one, I'm really against education, like how I feel like they make you be something you're not, how you're forced to go to college or university. I don't agree with it. Like we're homeschooling my baby sister because <laughs> I think from a very young age, you're kind of shaped into someone you're not. And I don't yes. agree with that. Um, and number two, okay, so an event, do you know what it was? It was when I was in my nine to five um, and I left. And number one, I got told I was going to regret it. And I was like, okay, I'm going traveling around the world. I don't think I'm going to regret leaving. But anyway, and um, I think finding, do you know what it is? I've always been a poser. I've always loved having my picture taken. So ever since I was young, I, and I had Instagram, I just loved it. Like I loved Instagram. It's always been a passion of mine. It sounds so stupid. But I've basically turned my passions. I've always done brows. Like I've always done my friend's brows before I even trained in it. I would do my friend's brows and lashes. And I turned all my passions into money, like making money out of it, basically. I like started my studio, so now I charge people. I use Instagram. I don't make money off Instagram, but I use Instagram as a platform to form my network marketing brand. Um, and yeah, I think finding your niche, you're just, you just have to find what you enjoy, in all honesty. Like, 
it's that simple and I think in this world we're made it's made out like it's not that simple you have to get certain degrees to do certain things to be a certain person and it is as simple as loving what you do and like I reckon you can tell me you are so much happier since you've moved back home, you're doing your podcast and your YouTube and everything like that. You're probably so much happier than when you were doing the right thing. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, going back to that traditional route, you know, I, especially, you know, my mom really wants, you know, I mean, obviously she wants me to do what I love, but the ideal um, kid that your parent wants to have is someone who's working in a stable job that's working nine to five, making those, um, you know, having a stable income, something that isn't fluctuating. You have a salary. It's very stable living. And I think that, you know, especially for me, I finding my niche is like doing my hobby and from your hobby kind of branching out into whatever direction you want to go into so you know for me it was editing videos and I love to edit YouTube videos and I'm like okay well what can I do from editing YouTube videos because obviously I have to have material to edit so maybe I start making the material and the content and that way I can edit it as well and I think that kind of you're really you're sticking to what you love, but there's also that component of, you know, work to it as well. I think do what you love. And then I, I truly believe this. I like, do what you love. And I think everyone, everything else will find you. Don't worry yes. about how. Yes, yeah. It will just yeah. find you. Like, yeah. also yeah. I forgot to say my five years goal where I see myself, I want to have my own book. Actually, I do have one more question for you. Um... And this kind of revolves around social media and posting, especially pictures on Instagram. And well, now you're, you have a YouTube channel, but, you know, you're putting your face, you're putting your body, you're putting you basically your entire life out on the Internet. And you're so susceptible to receive negative feedback and judgment and just bitterness towards you so I don't know if you've experienced any of that yet but I wanted to you know even if you haven't what would you do like how do you get over that and continue to post on social media and you know just say like it's just some person behind a screen um and you know keep on going forward with it like how do you brush it off so i, guess, I would I say first things first i feel sorry for those people um they've obviously the i think people who are bitter they're not in a good place themselves and you just have to feel sorry for them um and the way i would get over it is genuinely like i said feeling sorry for them because honestly i you know i follow loads of influencers stuff on instagram and they post it a lot i don't really receive hate myself i'm not big enough and i don't have a big enough following but the hate some people get you just have to laugh it off because they must be such bitter disgusting people to take the time out of their day to post on your stuff i would feel honored that you've even taken the time yeah. to do that like i think that is how i would go about it um and also, what would keep me going is remembering my vision and my goal of where I want to be in five years' time, of why I'm doing this. Like, that one person not going to let ruin. They don't pay my bills at the end of the day. The one person that writes a comment. So well, I think, you know, another way to look at it is they're still a fan of your stuff. A fan, you know, doesn't need to be necessarily one that's buying your merch that has your name on it or, like, you know, watching your YouTube video and buying every single product that you're like an ambassador for. So you get your commission money. I think that, you know, a fan is anyone who watches your content, um, looks at anything that you're posting, comments on any, they're still putting towards your analytics. They're still, <laughs> a still, you know, something that you're making some sort of revenue or um, impact from so I think probably you know something that I always try and remember or remind myself is yeah they're still a fan <laughs> they you know maybe they're a negative fan but they're still a fan they're still contributing to my you know 17 percent um you know like active rate of fault like you just you got to look at it as you know they're 
they're still helping you <laughs> but also I about social media and posting how I do post my life and um, recently I have because it's kind of what I need to do however I am genuinely as happy as I seem to be on social media that I don't go home and cry into my pillow every night because I am I'm posting someone I'm not living a life I'm actually happy with I think social media is an incredible positive place when you're in an incredible positive place however yeah when you're in a negative space, it is very, um, it can ruin you. Like, as it nearly ruined me at a point because I was posting this life that I didn't have and I was so unhappy and I was like crying myself to sleep every night. And I would still be posting like, hmm, happy Friday, woo! Like, I wasn't yeah. happy, like, I didn't like my life. But I think the trick is, don't post unless you genuinely mean it and you genuinely feel as happy as you say you are kind of thing or be real with it post yeah. a picture and be like i'm really struggling today like i think be real and be genuinely happy and it's a very positive place yeah i like that that's a, that's something good that i think i need to start implementing especially you know you have the freedom with i'm bigger like i love instagram i think instagram is like the hierarchy of all social medias um and i think they give you that opportunity to post your picture and then also write that caption so you know maybe you're posting a picture that you took like three months ago but then you know you're writing look this was three months ago but actually um I'm a hot mess today and um really not doing well and I think that's something that I really sh struggled with at the very beginning of all of my um starting to create a social media platform um, yeah I remember putting on a facade for people because I, I had posted this picture on New Year's Eve and everyone's commenting like, oh my gosh, you look so great. Like, you know, you lost so much weight since the last time I saw you. Like your makeup's beautiful. And little did they know that was like the hardest part of my eating disorder. Like that month was like the worst time for me. And I was struggling so hard with it. And like I was literally in bed all day because I like didn't have any energy in my body because I was so ill like physically ill and you know you post that picture and it's like wow this girl's got her life together like she's doing all these cool things and it, it's like no I'm just wearing this mask but I think over the past couple months like really I, I love listening to podcasts like that's all I do all day long and um, I think a lot of those you know youtubers and podcasters with a couple million subscribers or followers they really implement that you know life's not always what you think it is on the internet or whatever but you have to try your best to make it seem or not make it seem but like make it as real what you what is real like if you're gonna post something that's not then why bother even posting it because it's you know, originally Instagram's supposed to be like capture the moment, you know, what you're doing at that second and send it to your friends who, you know, maybe you don't have on text or like you don't have their number or whatever. So I think that it's strayed away so much from that general or that specific idea and has gone in so many different directions. And I think it's so hard, though, because so many people, people want to see the fake stuff, too. That's another big thing. People want to see what they want to see, not the truth. So let's I, bring I, it back to reality, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, I think I completed all of my questions, actually. But where can the, I always, in my head, when I plan it, like, Thinking of my sentence, I'm like, where can my viewers, they're not viewers, they are listeners for the podcast, yeah. <laughs> where can the listeners uh, follow you or find you on the internet? So my, I use Instagram mainly, to be honest. Um, my Instagram is Melissa Jasmine underscore. So it's M-E-L-I-S-S-A. J A S M I N E underscore. Yeah, and then uh, your YouTube channel. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. that. Same thing. <laughs> um, so I think it's just Melissa Jasmine. All right. Well, I'll link everything down in the like the description below this. 
Thank you so much for coming on my podcast. This was so exciting. Like you were my first, not my friend or my boyfriend being a guest. Yeah. So. So. It's so amazing how social media works. I think it truly is an incredible place. So yeah. thank you for yeah. having me. Um. All right. Well, I hope that everyone has a great day whenever they're listening to this. And I will talk to you guys in my next podcast episode. Bye. Bye. Thank you.